Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look at using the gradient map to make things black and white and monochrome conversion. But the ways that things get converted are different. So let's see how we, it happens in other tools. So the common one we use, that's often used is HSL, hue, saturation and luminosity. And then just turn down the saturation on that. And there, solid colours, the saturated colours, just go to grey. Let's turn that off and try another way. Uh, another way is to use the straight black and white tool, which is very powerful. But the solid colors, colors here start off as white. But we can control them with the sliders in the tool. And a third way is if you go to the channel mixer and change the channel there to grey and you immediately get different effect here. But what you're getting here is the colours are coming up different shades of grey. And this is because it's using perceived lightness of the colour. So yellow, for example, we see that as being pretty light and pretty bright, whereas blue we see as being darker and others in between. So it tries to emulate the way we would see it if we saw colours in black and white. Right, so let's see what happens when we use the gradient map. So go to gradient map here, we start off with lots of colours here and of course it's mapping the colours under here to here so dark colours are red, light colours, whites are blue and mid-tones are green so you get the strange effect but we can click and drag things off or I could have clicked the delete down there uh, here's a useful tip when doing this, which is when you go to the colour here, um, you've got it here. I put it into swatches. Normally you might see the RGB sliders or something else like that. But if you go to swatches, what you get as a default, whatever these are, is on here you've got black, mid grey and white. And it's useful to have those. So then I can just click the black for that one. Go to the right hand one here, make sure it goes bigger and then turn that to white. And what we can see here, that shows the model that's being used when we convert to this. So the gradient map does the perceived lightness model, similar to the channel mixer, but not like the black and white or the hue, saturation and luminance. That is worth knowing. And let's try this on a real picture. And so we go to the gradient map. We take away the middle one. The left hand one with swatches selected here is going to be black. The right hand one, make sure the bigger picture, the circle goes big, goes to white. And there we have the picture as it is. And now what we can do now is play around with this here. We can click to add a point here and drag it up and down. But do note that when you click on a point here, for example, it doesn't pick up the colour underneath it. It uses a different algorithm, but you can still slide it around. If you want to pick up the colour underneath, click on um, one to the left here, and then if you do insert, it will put a point halfway down to the right, but only to the right. And in this case, you got mid grey. So I got more control of my picture like this. Something else you can do. If you want to say, let's make this a bit more contrasty, is I can hit Control J and have a second layer here. And then I can go here to the blend mode and go to overlay. Now I've increased the contrast just using two gradient map layers there. What I can also do with this is to use the opacity and change the amount this top layer has. So I can control this quite easily like this. Another thing you could do is, for example, if I click on the left hand node there and hit copy, it will take the same color and put that 50% down. But I can drag this up here. And now I can make this just affect the, the darks. So, but for that, I don't want the, the, everything else to be affected, so 
I'm going to change, first of all, with this, I'm going to change the blend mode to darken so that now we've got this effect where we're still getting some other things here. But I want white because white has little effect when I darken it to so make sure that's fully white. Now, if I change the opacity, notice see that now we've only got the darker bits being adjusted. So under the wheel arches. And what we've got is saying that this is the range of tones which are affected and this is the feathering on the edge of that. There's a lot more we can do with this but I'm going to do that in another video. So thank you very much for watching.